What's up guys, Chasing Lamely here with episode number two of our Beginner's Guide to Football Manager 24. And today's episode, I'm going to go through squad building, and well, squad management and tactics, because they kind of go hand in hand. So if you missed the first video, I just kind of went through the first two on the job stuff, but obviously I'm breaking it down into episodes A, because otherwise this would be a 19-hour video, and B, because it makes it easier for people to find the things they want more information on faster essentially so that's why we're doing this today so let's without any further ado go and visit the uh the lovely home screen as you can see i've, I've removed the camera in the last episode just so uh just so everyone can see everything clearly so before you go into fixtures you need to know what your squad looks like now we talked about the first episode the squad planner and how you can see things by role we can do a full squad view here uh we can somewhere tell it to just show me everyone but apparently it's not going to do that that would be too easy wouldn't it anyway used to do that apparently they've got rid of it so we're going to the squad view here i recommend using the general info screen because it's just easier um, i've made a copy of the of the general info screen here just because i wanted everything spaced out you can do that by right clicking and also sizing it so it's set up for the size of the monitor you have for the resolution monitor you have on the right hand side you'll find drop downs here that let you access your senior squad during the 21 squad your 18 squad we kind of want to look at all of them together you can also hire players who for example are injured international duty etc out on loan um and you know there are buttons for fairly self-explanatory things here but what i do today we want to have a look at our squad depth in general so we want to look at just make sure first look at your young your youth teams by ability is a good first point anyone who could be on the verge of playing in the first team just for now we're going to put them up into our senior squad just so we can see what we're doing it shouldn't affect their morale too much if you have to drop them back down but i just want to be able to see them all on one screen and uh, the first thing you want to look at organizing your players in your first team squad by ability when you get here is who are my three four five players i'm going to build a team around so for example manchester united it's going to be probably bruno fernandez let's put him as the am for now uh let's put rashford down as a left winger because that's probably where he'd play we know this squad really needs a striker we learned that in the last episode um we've got rafa varan who'll be playing as the left side of uh, center half for argument's sake luke shaw we'd have as a left back and casemiro we'd have as a holding midfielder that's a good little start there um it's essentially you can pick everything to your current tactic what i try and do is i try and put my best 11 players in positions some way somehow if there's obvious uh discrepancy like for example lindelof i'm probably not gonna play with three center halves but let's assume i will let's just go with our first 11 just for the, the simplicity of things, just to teach you how to go, how to build a first team score, put Henderson in goal, he would not be our first choice goalkeeper, I don't think. Start there, look at your tactics screen, that's going to be your strongest 11 right now. And obviously these guys are all on international duty, there's or summer break or whatever the case may be. We, last episode, we set up a Gagan press just because we wanted to have something to look at the squad planner and stuff with. You can start, create a new tactic here. We're not going to use the wizard, really. Um, in fact, we can, we can forgo this because I would do a lot of it the same way anyway. So let's just go back to the main screen. Let's assume we're going to play with a Gagan press. Um, it's probably not going to work because we can see our 11 best players feature three centre halves and two wing backs. Uh, we've got two central midfielders, two wingers, and let's, for our, in fact, who was our, I, I didn't realize I only picked 10 players and that worked. Oh, we've got Scott McTominay. That's good. He can be normally our attacker. Obviously, he won't be our attacker once we're done setting this up. So, tactics wise, that is my best 11 players. First thing we want to do is to make sure we get them all in their preferred position. So let's put Lindelof in as a centre half, which hopefully will let me do there. Good job. Um, we'll put McTominay, for argument's sake, in central midfield right now. We'll put Casemiro in there as well. Uh, let's say we're going to start with. Honestly, it looks like it will be a strikerless formation. Uh, let's put Fernandez on the right wing. Let's put Garnacho on the left wing. 
and uh, we'll put Rashford up top for now. Just give us just gives us a brief idea of what our strongest eleven players look like in position, just so we can see where we're at. Now, obviously, one thing we've got here, one one small issue, is we don't really want to have a flat five at the back. We're Manchester United, we shouldn't play with a flat five at the back. So we'll push those guys up to be wing backs as their primary role. Very straightforward. This actually is a common working formation. You can drop those guys back into defence and that will keep goals out, believe me. Um, what we're seeing here is we've got a lot of a lot of width. We're not really a narrow team. We can do something with that, we can do something about that. One thing we can do though on this year's FM, which is brand new for this year's game, is we can play these guys as inverted wing backs or inverted fullbacks. Now an inverted fullback means they'll come and play as a centre half when you're in possession, and a inverted wing back means they'll play as a holding midfielder when you're in possession. One thing you might want to do, I don't know if you can do it from this wing back position, you probably can if I'm honest. You can. So let's say we want to have Luke Shaw playing as an inverted wing back on defence. He will then, when we have possession, slot in here and play as a defensive midfielder. One thing you want to be cognizant of when you are using players, obviously this will tell you that they can do it, so we'll put it on automatic. That just means that he'll play as an attacking version if you're in attack, etc. Um, one thing to be cognizant of is where people's best positions are on the field as well. So Dallow, he's not one of our top players. His best position is as a wing back. I may want to have him potentially playing as a, an inverted fullback here. So he'll come and join the defence. And then I could say to anyone, well, I don't even know who our best ball playing defender will be. We can find out using this. Let's look at everyone's best role. We've got our ball playing midfielder there. And he's going to be a ball playing midfielder there too. So that's going to work out quite nicely. We're already getting an idea of what we do best. One thing I want to do here is swap Martinez, obviously A to the left hand side. That's a good start. And then we'll move in the that's not worked at all. Why are you not working? There we go. And then we've ran into the middle. But just so I can illustrate the point I'm trying to make here. So Martinez will play him as a ball player midfielder. We could have him as a wide centre back and he would go and cover Shaw when he comes in. That's an option if you want to have Dallow staying as a right back. Uh, here we're going to make him a ball playing defender. And then what we can do with Varane is we can tell Varane to play as a defensive libero. That means when we're in possession, Luke Shaw will cut inside here. Varane will move his way up in, into here, and you'll essentially give yourselves extra midfield power. That can be quite useful. We're looking, we're already sort of starting to see what kind of team we would be with this. Uh, now, look at Casemiro. What does Casemiro do best? First of all, we can click on him here. The screen will tell you his best role is actually as a defensive midfielder holding. That's what he does best. Uh, as a, sorry, as a ball winning, ball winning holding midfielder. He can do it in the central midfield just as well. It's important to know what does here. As you click on these as well on the left hand side, what you'll see is that these will change. Blue means that that's vital for the position. Grey means it's just advised. Um, try and get as high ratings and anything highlighted as you can if you're using a particular position for a positional role. You can also play as a centre half. I'm not going to use Casemiro as a centre half. For now, we're going to make him a ball-winning midfielder on defend. Very, very straightforward stuff. So the ball-winning midfielder on defend is what he's already doing. Let's look at Scott McTominay, who, annoyingly, is also a ball-winning midfielder on support. We don't really want two guys doing the same thing in the same team for reasons. Uh, so let's see if he's anything else at three stars. He doesn't. That's just what he does best here. For now, we'll make him a ball winning midfielder on support just because it will give him something to do with it and because, you know, we are, we're trying to figure out what we're doing. Slightly different variations on the roles. You can see here what the difference is. So a ball winning midfielder, close down the opposition and win the ball. If you tell them to defend, they'll look to win the ball in centre midfield and give it to another player. If you tell them to support, they'll try and win it back high up the pitch and start counter attacks. So they're kind of doing roles that support each other a little bit. This actually should be quite defensively solid. It might actually work. Let's move forward at the pitch. And Bruno Fernandes, his best role is rather frustratingly as an attacking midfielder. He can play as a right midfielder, but as a playmaker. Which is an odd role to use on a wing. You can do it. There's nothing wrong with doing it. We could also drop him back into centre midfield. But for the sake of argument, let's make him a 
In fact, let's ignore him for now. Let's completely ignore him for now because we need to see what Garnacho does best. Garnacho is best as an inside forward on the left-hand side. So we will use him as an inside forward on the left-hand side. That's very straightforward and we'll tell him to support. Um, again, you can see the differences here. Inside forward, very straightforward. They will cut inside from the wing to try and essentially become an extra striker. If you put them on support, they'll cut behind the defence and play through balls and take long shots. If you put them on attack, they'll try and run a goal more often. So that will tell us what he does. Uh, Bruno Fernandes, we can use him as an advanced playmaker on the wing. Um, it's an interesting position on the wing because he's a bit more mobile. He will come inside, even from the wing he'll come inside. And again, on support, you can stay in the hole and pass balls to other players. Or you can have him an attack. He'll run out defence and try and cross or play through ball opportunities. So we'll try that. We'll use him as an advanced player. I've never done that with a player in my life before. But let's assume that that's what he's doing. And then again, as a striker, um, I really would have him as a complete forward, Marcus Rashford. Because essentially as a complete forward... What he'll do is he'll lay off the ball to other players, so he, he will be the target man, he'll be the poacher, he'll be the advance forward, he'll do everything. Very straightforward. Um, support, obviously, he does less trying to score goals and drops back, and he might say as a, as a support one, drop back here, if Garnacho was on attack, he would slot in instead to fill the space. Very straightforward. So, let's have a look at the, little, at the roles we've got here. And try and get an idea of how this team moves in possession. I think I'm going to drop Luke Shaw back. I'm assuming Luke Shaw can play as a regular defensive wing back as well as he can do it there. Good, he can. So this, because of the way the new dynamics are moving, I would use the sort of flat back five because it's still he's still going to move in here when we get possession. Defensively, he's a left back. Moves it, move, when we get possession, he's going to move in here. So what we're actually doing here, what you will find we do here, is we've got a lot of players who are going to move inside. They're going to very much compress into the centre of the park and leave a lot of space out wide. That can be problematic. So probably a Gagan press isn't going to help because if we play against a team with wingers, say I think Crystal Palace are a good example of a team that still use old-fashioned wingers, that's going to pull Martinez out here when we're at, when we're out of possession. We're in that transitional phase. It will pull him out here to try and defend if we're up against a counter attack and leave all sorts of problems in here. So tactical style here, we can probably say a vertical ticky tacker is going to work better because when we've got the ball, everyone is going to be trying to pass in here. Everyone's going to be in the middle. It's going to be all about playing up middle. So we've kind of learned through doing this that actually vertical tiki tacker is our best thing. Was that even a suggestion by our creative tactic? It was. So it did understand that was a thing we could do. But what it didn't give you the option of was doing that as a as a four two three, whatever we've got here five four one. It didn't give you that option. Already learning how to build a tactic. That's good. Now the next thing we want to do though is have a look at our bench because that's going to be really important, our bench players. Now, I think the Premier League, I can't remember how many subs you get. Let's assume you get nine. I think it's still nine. First of all, goalkeeper optional. I very rarely have a goalkeeper on the bench. What I tend to do is I'll have my best right back, my best centre back, and my next best left back on the bench. Uh, let's use Alex Tellers. He's not going to be here. But he wouldn't be here by the time we got to the season. Next thing I want to do is make sure I've got options for midfield. So I might go, okay, I want a guy who can play defensive midfielder. Uh, I want a guy like Kobe Mainu who can play as a central midfielder. Um, in fact, I've just realised I've got Christian Eriksen there. The holiday sign through me. Uh, I want someone that can cover me on the right wing. I want someone that can cover me on the left wing, which for now, let's, for argument's sake, if I just use Marshall for that... Let's use a Langer for that. That's a good idea. Um, and then I want someone who can play up front. Those are my basics. Then maybe I want to have the extra covering man for defence. I want someone to give me something a bit different in midfield. And for the sake of argument, it's going to be Hannibal. Although well, actually, having the best role up here is very helpful. Because we can say, OK, we'll put Donny van der Beek in there. Gives us an extra playmaker. Bit of a different option. I can then have, say, Anthony out as a winger. Instead of having Fernandez there, give me the option to move around. This just gives you an idea of what we can do with the squad, what you want to do with the bench, etc. See what's covered, 
see what spare options you've got. If we if we organise now by position selected, you can see here that if I bring on Wan Bissaka, he's like for like with Dallow. If I bring on Harry Maguire, he wants to drift out wide. So does Lindelof and Varane. But you can also obviously click in there and you can see, well, maybe he could play as a ball playing defender, but you can see how that would change your tactical shape, how you might have to rethink things if you bring him on or if you want to integrate him into your first team. You can think about how you would do that. Alex Teller's complete wing back, he can do it all. He will work fine with Luke Shaw, give you even maybe a couple more options. Uh, Fred, another ball winning midfielder. There's so many, there's too many ball winning midfielders in this squad. There really are too many ball winning midfielders in this squad. Not even in doubt. Uh, Christian Eriksen though gives an option of having a deep line playmaker. So if we're holding firm and we're playing against a Sheffield United, say, I might want to stick Christian Eriksen in there and have him creating chances a little bit further forward for me. Uh, I may want to, have, if I bring on a Langer, he's a like for like replacement for Ganacho. Uh, Marshall, probably not quite as good as a complete forward as uh, as Rashford. So. Maybe I want to use him in his best position as an advance forward. That's another tactical option. Eric Bailly, again, another wide centre-back, gives us options. Donny van der Beek, another playmaker, gives us options. You can kind of see what we've got to work with down here in terms of who does what best. So, having got that kind of laid out, you can see from here, A, where we're strongest, B, where we're weakest, and you can start to get an idea when we start looking at transfers, which I promise will be next episode. We'll start looking at transfers because I don't want this one to be another 45 minute escapade into everything. Um, yeah, you can see where we would start to form an idea of where the strengths are, where the weaknesses are, what we need. For example, what we need here for sure is more creativity in midfield, um, probably a few better options on the wing and definitely more goal scorers because that would be a priority for me, and a new goalkeeper, because I like Dean Henderson, but probably not for Manchester United, and not £120,000 a week. Um, but next thing you want to look at is, let's go into a random player, Diego Dolo, because we were there. Um, look at the players we've got, and look at what we have in terms of what they can do. So this is really important, actually, we're going to, to the score screen. it's really important at lower league level more than here. At lower league level, because your whole squad, and you can see here our full squad is probably 90-odd players, this is sustainable at Manchester United because Manchester United make a lot of money. So you can afford to have a player who's just there to learn his trade and develop, earning £25,000 a week. You couldn't do that at Stevenage, for example. You couldn't do that. If you're playing with a smaller team, you really want 20, 25 players max. You want essentially two of everything. You would like a goalkeeper, two, you know, two goalkeepers, two right backs, four centre halves, etc. Depending on your formation, you want your, your starter and your backup. Your starter should be ready now. Your backup ideally needs to be not quite as good, but with way better potential. So, for example, if I was playing as Stevenage, I might have Marcus Rashford be my left winger. I would have a Langer as the backup, and I would bin off everyone else. I would just bin off everyone else and I would be looking at who's earning the most money and I'd be getting rid of them, entirely getting rid of them because, uh, in fact, let's let's go to the screen of a National League side. That's gone well. I've clicked all the wrong buttons. Um, ignore that. I do know what I'm doing. Uh, so let's go back to... Where, where is everything gone? Where is everything gone? They've moved all the stuff from where I expect it to be. Let's start again. Let's start again from the very beginning. Oh, look, there we are. League 2. That'll do. So we'll pick a League 2 squad. Say we're going to pick Crawley. Bloody hate Crawley. But I'll pick Crawley for the sake of argument. And we're looking at Crawley again. You'll have to do this every time you do anything vaguely different on the thing. Uh, resize, auto resize all columns so we can see what's going on. Say I've taken over with Crawley. I've looked at my squad. This squad's actually a really good size for for a club like Crawley, I already can see exactly where I'd be trying to do what with my transfers. Because it's a small squad, it makes it easier to see what's going on. So, I might look at this squad and I can already see where I would add players. I don't know what the exact number of players here is. You can very quickly find that out by dragging, dropping, rotating 20 players. Exactly the kind of perfect size of squad I want. 
If I was managing Crawley, I can already see I need another right back. There's two ways I can get another right back. I can either click on them and I can go through the training screens and I can retrain any of my players as a right back. Or I can go out and buy one, obviously. But also I look at this and I go, okay, who is earning what? Don Telford on £4,000 a week is earning far too much for League 2. You can see here the average, you can get a decent player for £1,000, £1,500 a week. And so I'm looking and going, he's worth 425 k I can sell him and I can move him on and I can rebuild my entire squad with that money, uh, no matter how good he is. So, you know, that would be my first priority. But because you can only have 20 players, one thing I would be looking to do is having players like Ben Gladwin who can play in multiple positions. I would rather have 20 average players who can play in three or four positions each at this level, that have 11 superstars that can play in one position and neglect the backups, and all my finances are up, up the creek without a paddle and I'm in trouble. So there are other things you take into, account, into consideration as you go further down the league, is what I'm trying to say. Kind of make the most of your money. I'd rather, have, you know, at this level I can afford to have Aaron Wambasaka can play in one position, he can do it fairly well, and... We all kind of get over it, and I need to resize all my columns again because they've not figured that out this year. Good. Anyway, it'll be fine once I put my squad view in. What I'm basically saying here is think about your squad at the level it's at, and think about how you build it, what you need, what's useful, what's not. Always be thinking of that throughout your time. Be thinking about what you've got in your squad and what you've not. This is an unnecessarily large squad for a for a conference side for a league two side it's probably too big a squad honestly for a premier league side and especially because if we look at potential here there is absolutely no reason for any of anyone from here down to be at the club because they're never going to be good enough for manchester united good enough for your club is realistically three stars anyone who's not going to get to three stars get rid of them if they're not already at three stars and they're over 30 get rid of them in fact, they're not already at three stars and they're over 22, get rid of them, quite honestly. I know they, they've got the idea that people can develop later in the game uh, in, in 24, but honestly, basic advice, if they're not going to make it good enough for your first team, they don't need to be here. Everyone, honestly, from here down, could go. Could go quite easily, could be sold quite easily. And if you're at a club like Crawley we're looking at and you find you have that same problem, anyone who's not at three stars already... Or going to put, or say, uh, let's for example, Will Fish. If this was Crawley, I'd keep him because he's decent enough to be a backup. He's you know he's good enough to sit on the bench. He might turn into a first team player. He's worth gambling on. Likewise, you know, or, or alternatively though, someone like Matish Kovar because goalkeepers don't play very often. He's not worth keeping around. His upside isn't big enough for me to keep around. So I might sell him because. He's not going to get there. Likewise, I'd be looking at someone like Harry Maguire. He's good enough to be in the squad right now. No real upside. If I get a bid for him, I'm probably taking it. You know, you have to you have to be thinking about the future. You have to be thinking about the present. You have to be looking at all these things and working out. Is my squad far too big? That's always the plan. But that's kind of the basic go-through. I'll pick a random player again. We'll go through all the other screens you need to know about. So in here, you can find their basic attributes, the um, hex hexagon. They call it the hexagon. It's not. It's like a decagon or whatever. Octagon. I can count. The octagon will tell you who is good in what position. You can, on your main screen, have it blown up. So say I don't want to see this guy's biography right here. I could, in theory, have it right there, blown up, big and things. And I can see roughly how his attributes spread out over the course of time. Uh, I can see about his happiness as well. So I can see what he's thinking. Um, I can see what his, his promised development pathway looks like. I can see my relationship with him, where he fits in the squad, all of his plans, all that good stuff. Uh, on the information screen, I can see if he's got a second nationality. It would appear here. If he's got favoured personnel, it will tell you here if he's got a brother. It will tell you if his dad's a manager. It will tell you all sorts of stuff about the player there. His contract info is in here. And I can make offers and new contracts release him, release him in here. Transfers, as I said, will go through properly here. But we can see his basic transfer status. Um, what he's worth. 
all that kind of good stuff lives in there. His development, you can go individual development. If I decide I want to make this guy, for whatever reason, a central midfielder on defend, I can tell him to do it, and he'll do it. I can also tell him to focus on an individual thing there if I want to, and how intensely I want to be doing it, and all that good stuff. Even to develop his weaker foot, I can tell him to develop new mental traits, all sorts of stuff in that screen, and we can go through those if you want me to. Let me know in the comments. I will go through the really, really, really niche things quite happily, but I'm just trying to make this accessible for the beginner. Uh, here we can see what the coach thinks of him. So um, he's not really any good with skill because he has no composure. Uh, he's probably going to get booked a lot. Um, he's no good in the air, and he's currently a championship quality player, apparently. Um, but he might develop into being a decent Premier League player, so we don't know just yet. We can look at his performance, his stats, obviously, as he plays, we can get all this kind of stuff in there. Um, we can have conversations with our players to recommend things. So if you've got a guy who's been around a while, say you're at Crawley and you sign James Milner. Let's use James Milner as an example. Say you're at Crawley, you sign James Milner, you might go, he's been around a bit, he might know a decent player that will improve our squad, might know a decent staff member that could improve our coaching team. You can ask them, you can praise them, you can warn them about their conduct, and older players you can also discuss maybe making them coaches and stuff, if they look to do that. You can also have comparisons here, so say I want to look at how good it is Jaden Camerson as a right-back in comparison to... Well, let's go with Diego Dallo, because he's there. I can look at it either in hexagon view, which gives me a kind of overview, obviously... Dallo better all round, but I can see where he might match up or might need to improve to be that first team player. I can look into attribute view and I can say, okay, well, um, I'm playing as a an inverted fullback right now, so let's see how they match up to each other, and it will tell me who the better of the two players is in the important positions that are highlighted, which is very good at a glance. Quite obviously, they're all Diego Dallo because that's what you expect from that. Um, but I can also I can compare him with players from any player I've been looking at recently. So if I've been looking at, say, um, Nathaniel Klein, first right back that popped into my head, he would pop up here as someone to compare to. Or I can go to one of the team's player if I've got him fully scouted and I can compare him to players in my own squad to see how he'd fit in. And I can use the fine signal of the player's filters to find players who are just like this player if I'm trying to replace, say, an ageing player with more of the same. I can see his history here, obviously he's only played for Manchester United, and I can see everything that's happened to him in his life, any injuries he's had, he's quite useful for signing players, and I can even say to keep his history after he retires, and I can look back on his career fondly in 20 seasons' time and see how he develops when he retires. All very simple stuff. So, that's a really quick rundown of squad and tactical development. Um, I can probably do more, in fact I should have done more tactically here to explain how things work. Let's do that very quickly before I wrap up, because that will be important to you as things continue. So, as I said before, always think about, once you've got these players in, you can see the indication of the general team shape. They're all going to move to the inside as well, playing vertical tiki-taka. Also, think about how positions interact with each other. So, for example, I don't want either... If I had, say, Casemiro playing as a defensive midfielder, say he's in here... That way, um, Varane, when he moves up, will probably move to, the, to his right. Shaw will come into his left. I'll end up with a 3-3-1. Three, three, very lopsided. We don't want to do that. Um, there's too much clutter there. It's too defensive. And we're trying to, if they're in that shape, they're trying to move the ball forward. There's no one supporting McTominay. He, if, he, if the ball gets given away, there's no one to help him win it back, is what's happening there. Um, Garnacho is coming inside here and he's going to come in to attack so maybe what we want to do with Rashford to compensate for that is to have him as a pressing forward he'll drop back or go deep lying forward he'll drop back more into here and make room pull a player out for Garnacho you have him as a dance forward and maybe he'll drift out to the left and Garnacho gets space all these things you need to kind of be thinking about is what this team looks like in motion I wish we had like an animation that could show you what this looks like in motion. You can look at the analysis screen, which will tell you that where there are weaknesses, where there are strengths. Red, obviously, a weakness. Bright green, obviously, a strength. Where we are in the team as well. That's quite a useful screen to use just while you're adjusting things. And we can take turn analysis off. And you can also see stats here for how happy.
key players are, etc. Uh, and how familiar they are with the tactics you're using, which will develop over time as it goes on. And obviously we can tweak this as we go and as new players come in. Um, and obviously I said this is based on the players we have now. If I decide, for example, that I don't want to play on this, I can go, okay, that hasn't worked for Manchester United over the last few years. So maybe that's not what I want to change. Maybe that's what I want to change. And I want to say I want to use a particular a particular tactic. Um, in this case, let's say I want to use a 4-3-3 DMY gig and press. As basic a tactic as it comes. Really, honestly, as basic a tactic as it comes. Okay, so I can look at my squad now at a glance, and I can go, okay, so first of all, to make that work, I'd have to lose one of my best players. Uh, so let's take out Lindelof, because he was kind of the old man out. And in fact, let's leave him there for, for a second, just so I can make the point. Casemiro goes in there. I've got Rashford probably still playing up top. Fernando's Garnacho, I've got to put a midfielder in there that can make that work. Let's say I drop in, for argument's sake, Christian Eriksen into that role, right? These are the basic, basic um, roles that will make this tactic work. Getting and press, lots of passing, lots of pressing. It's very much about transition. Uh, you'll get, in, get to know how positions work. So a Caliero is a box-to-box -box midfielder, but he only really moves between attacking midfielder and defensive midfielder. A true box-to-box -box will be in defence when you've lost the ball. He'll be in attack when you've got the ball. That's kind of the difference. And then you'll have like, Masala will drift out wide. That's always quite useful in a Gagan press. But for now, for argument's sake, let's look at that. What we've seen here is that we don't have players that can make the best of that in our best 11. Anything below three stars, I would be uncomfortable with, ideally in a tactic. So I can see here, to, if I want this to be the way I play... I need to invest in defensive midfielders, sorry, regular midfielders, centre midfielders, and probably need to get a new striker. I definitely need another man on the wing, although arguably I put Rashford out there, I just need a new striker now. You know, you can kind of see how this would develop as a thing, and you can also click on the player's name tag there and see, okay, maybe this works better if I put Ericsson back there, for example, or maybe I've got a better option at right back here. I have, I've got one, Basaka. So if I'm playing this way, maybe I want to have Basaka in, sacrifice the slightly technically better player Dallo for the guy who does the position better, and develop it from there. So you can kind of see how that all looks. You can click on there, for example, and Casemiro is doing that better. In fact, he's probably doing better than Ericsson is. Um, likewise, Ericsson doesn't really fit in there. So I can swap that. Say I swap that around. I go, okay, I'm going to put Ericsson in there because he's just as good. Casemiro strengthened that up a little bit. Uh, I can do a fully, fairly competent thing in there with that. Can I swap those guys around? Does that make that any better? It doesn't, but I do I have another three-star? You know, you can kind of see how the thought process goes. I can already see now I need to make this even vaguely work. I would need to sign a goalkeeper, a striker, and a new central midfielder to play either of those roles. And then I've got to find backups for those, and that would dictate our transfer policy going forward so it's all about how you want to play and what your players are capable of if you come in mid-season i strongly strong i can't recommend this enough try and make the best of the players you've got there and rebuild the following summer honestly rebuild the following summer to play the way you want to play because trying to fit square pegs in round holes without being able to have a transfer window for example is really a bad idea it won't help you at all so that's my advice for that. But we'll go through that next time. I'll go through transfers and all that good stuff next time out. But for now, let's wrap the episode up, shall we? If you enjoyed this video or if you want to just make sure other people see it, it will help the newbies out. Please hit the like button, subscribe, leave comments down below if you've got any questions. Share it with your friends. If you've got a friend who keeps asking you annoying FM questions because he knows you've been playing for years and you can't be bothered to answer it, send this to him and he will answer their questions for them, hopefully. As I said, if you leave any comments down below, I'll answer them as best I can. Um, questions I'll answer. Uh, if I get the same question a lot, I might make like a supplemental video at the end of the series where I can answer all those questions and everyone gets helped at the same time. But in the meantime, guys, I have been chasing them. As I said, like, subscribe. It helps the channel, helps people find this video. Until next time, um, I'll see you all very soon. Stay safe.
Have a good one.